This LED wall is bigger than my wingspan, but unlike the LED walls you've seen at concerts and light shows that cost thousands of dollars, I built this one for under 500. Last year, I made a video showing you guys exactly how I built this thing, and the response was amazing. My goal with this channel has always been to inspire you guys to take on tech projects, and I never expected to reach as many people as I did with that video. With that said, I think there's a bit of confusion about who this project is for. I got a lot of comments asking, why not just buy a TV or or a projector for that price. So in this video, I'm gonna be answering your guys' questions about the limitations of this design so you can make an informed decision before you try to build one just like this. And if you stick around to the end, I'll even be giving a sneak peek at the new version of the LED wall that I'm working on right now. Let's get started. To kick things off, I wanted to answer another frequently asked question on that video. And that's if you can add more pixels to increase the pixel density or screen resolution of this display. My goal with this project was to cover the biggest area possible for the lowest cost. So I used 30 pixel per meter LED strips, but you can buy the exact same LEDs in 60 pixels per meter or even 144 pixels per meter. These same LEDs even come in these pre-made 16 by 16 matrices that you can tile together to make a bigger matrix. The simple answer is yes, you can use any of these options to create a higher density LED wall than this one. But wait, before you go out and buy all the parts to do that, there are a few things that you need to consider. Increasing the number of pixels you have will increase the power requirements and also the heat output by the display, but it'll also increase the amount of data that you need to transmit to the screen. It's easy enough to solve the power requirements by limiting the brightness of each pixel, but to solve the data issue is a bit more tricky. Professional installations will use an expensive driver box to drive all the pixel data to all the pixels in the display. But I I took a more affordable approach with my design using a free open source piece of software that translates my computer screen into pixel data. The code that I wrote gets the pixel data over USB serial, which has a maximum supported baud rate just under one megabit per second which is not very fast. This wall is only 64 pixels wide by 36 pixels tall, and each pixel requires 16 bits of RGB data per frame. That's five bits for red, six bits for green, and five bits for blue. Each frame contains 4,600 bits of data, which means we get a theoretical maximum throughput of 200 frames per second with this wall. And although that sounds amazing, in reality, we only get about 20 frames per second because these microcontrollers take such a long time to actually drive that data to the pixels themselves. And on top of that, the amount of data goes up exponentially as you increase the number of pixels. Let's say you wanna build a wall like this, but instead of using the 30 pixel per meter strips that I use, you wanna use the 60 pixel per meter strips. Instead of a 64 by 36 ratio, you would have 128 pixels by 72 pixels. What an amazing resolution. <laughs> While that doesn't sound that impressive, you go from around 2000 pixels that this has to over 9,000 pixels. And four times the number of pixels means you're only gonna be able to get about a fourth of the frame rate. So the 20 frames per second I get would go down to only five frames per second. Absolutely terrible. I've been trying to solve this frame rate issue for a long time and I think I finally have the solution but more on that later. I think it's finally time to talk about the cost of this project and whether or not a TV or a projector is going to be a better option for you at this price. Let's be honest, this LED wall is not a high enough resolution to replace a TV or a projector. Any text that's on it is going to be illegible. Anything like that just isn't going to work and a TV or a projector is definitely going to be the better option for you. This is meant to be an art piece, something that you can show off to friends or have on the background of your videos like I'm doing here. It's really meant to just be a fun project and something that you can show off to people or just have to add color and some ambiance to your room. The reason I call this a budget LED wall is because it's significantly cheap when you compare it to the professional installations that cost upwards of $10,000. Of course, those LED walls come with the advantage of a higher resolution, but they also have the downside of the price because that is a luxury that you have to pay for. Even other DIY LED options, like Bitlooney's LED ping pong wall, are significantly more expensive than this, 
and they require far more labor to actually put together. I genuinely think that anybody could build this LED wall if you have a 3D printer and a little bit of uh, electrical knowledge, like you have to know how to solder. But I was able to put this together in just a week or two, and I genuinely think that anybody else could do the same. Ultimately, building an LED wall like this is a fun electronics project, and it's really meant to be a learning experience for anybody who's interested in getting into electrical engineering as a hobby. Seriously, isn't it awesome how one project can combine electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and computer science all into one easy to understand project that a student with very little knowledge can take on and learn while doing. If you're new to this kind of stuff and building a massive LED wall like this seems like a very daunting task, then here's a super cheap and easy project that anybody watching this can do right now. The two things you're gonna need are one of these 16 by 16 matrices I mentioned earlier, and a Wemos D1 mini microcontroller. And you can get both of these things for around $20 using my links down in the description. The matrix comes with an extra connector that you can solder to the five volt ground and D2 pin of the Wemos D1 mini. I've uploaded a simple Arduino sketch to my GitHub page along with the LMC SHD app. Upload the sketch to the board and open up lmcshd.exe on your computer. From here, you can click connect from the dropdown menu and select the COM port your D1 mini is plugged into. Then all you have to do is find a GIF that you want to display and click play. The coolest thing about these matrix files is that you can just connect a bunch of them together for a bigger matrix. Kind of hard to see right now, but if I put this panel over the front, you can see it matches over. And this is just two matrix panels connected together. Very fun. Something to keep in mind if you're going to do this, though, is that double the panels means it's going to draw twice as much power. So you have to limit the brightness in the code. I have a brightness setting right here. Another thing to consider is that this data it has to be split up between two panels. Now in this setup, the data snakes along here and the second panel, when this panel ends right here, it starts up right there. So it keeps going. But if you're going to have multiple matrices stacked on top of each other and uh, here I have some spares, this configuration, then you're going to run into some issues because as soon as the data gets down to here, gonna have to jump to a separate panel. So that code is gonna be significantly more complicated if you wanted to run them in this type of a configuration versus just adding more in a line. Let me know in the comments if you want to know more details about how this type of code works and I can go into more depth in my future video. But for now, all the code is available on my GitHub page for you to look at. So that brings us to the new project that I promised I'd give you guys a sneak peek of. I just showed you how to build a super simple matrix using four tiles, but in these boxes, ah, I actually have a hundred of those matrix panels and I'm gonna be building a wall just as big as the one behind me out of it. While this wall has around 2,300 pixels, this new wall is gonna have over 25,000 pixels. And that is an absolute mess of data that I have to drive. So I'm pretty excited to show you guys the clever solution that I came up with. In the next video, I'm gonna be walking you guys through the entire design, including the electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and computer science aspects of it. So if that's something that you are interested in, make sure to get subscribed down below so you do not miss a thing. Just like my old LED wall, this new wall is gonna be modular. So if you want to just make one tile, that's totally fine. And if you want to build an even bigger LED wall, you can double the number of tiles I'm making and it'll still work. I've had such a good time reading through all your comments, so be sure to leave any suggestions or comments you have down below and I'll be sure to read them. I'm going to be going in depth into all of the engineering aspects that go into it, including how I solved each of the challenges that I discussed in this video. I've also had a ton of fun working on this new project and I'm so excited to bring it to you guys. In the meantime, YouTube seems to think you'll really like this other video of mine, so why not give it a try?